speak is uh, Dr. Paul Humphreys. He's a senior lecturer at uh, CSU, Charles Sturt Uni, and uh, he's been doing an exciting uh, project to do with uh, Aboriginal middens and looking at the fish Thanks, Keith. Thanks, Keith. Um, I'm between you and going home, so I'll try to be interesting and quick. Um, I'd like to acknowledge first all the um, co-authors and the, the project team, um, most of whom are from the Yorta Yorta Nation, uh, and Tamsin Greenwood, who's here, from Charles University, and Alan Williams, who's from ANU. So, um, most of us, I think, are keen on restoring and rehabilitating uh, rivers for conservation purposes, and uh, I think to, in order to um, do this, we need to know how things have changed since Europeans came in and started buggering things up, uh, and so therefore what they were like in the past, Yet, in most cases, like uh, Christine was showing, we, we, we've got a fairly poor understanding about what happened in the past. Um, and there was so much change going on in all sorts of ways, and, and as a fish ecologist, I, I know that as well as anybody else, that there weren't adequate records to tell us what was actually there before. And um, some years ago, in doing some historical research, I realised that there were a few op options, opportunities, like the um, paleoecology route, which I've also <laughs> Um, delved into, but also archaeology, and so I started pursuing those um, in collaboration with um, the Yuli Yorta Nation. Um, and they can tell us uh, perhaps what we've lost and perhaps also what we've gained. And of course, as Christine said, um, uh, Aboriginal people have been around for a long period, long period of time in Australia and um, uh, fished and ate the fish, and discarded the fish, amongst other things, of course, um, but also managed systems in various ways. And we have um, good early records of the sorts of things that they were doing, um, and archaeological remains, um, shell middens and, and oven mounds and things like that, provide a um, uh, perhaps an opportunity to go back in time and see what was there. <coughs> and here I've just uh, mucked around with sort of time scales for uh, sources in historical ecology, and we have all sorts of ways that we can ask questions about the past, oral history, photographs, newspapers, etc. Uh, and paleoecology is um, at the bottom there, like Christine was talking about, but archaeology is also a, a very useful tool and can go back a long way, as um, work at Lake Mungo and other places have shown. Um, mostly it stopped once the, um, um, the local people were um, displaced and, and, and moved away from being um, as active participants to being uh, less active participants in terms of the, sort of the records of, of, of middens. And interestingly enough, archaeological evidence can actually do, uh, can provide us a lot of information if we just know what to look for. And overseas, people have used archaeological records to understand about fish distribution, sizes, <laughs> growth rates, life history, habitat, diet, popul population dynamics, and food webs. You can get a lot of information out of the archaeological remains if you know what you're doing. So this study sort of grew out of these ideas, and it's a collaboration, as I said, between the Yorta Nation, Charles State University. Uh, and uh, um, Alan Williams from ANU involves indigenous knowledge and expertise, archaeologists, that's where Alan Williams comes in, I'm a fish ecologist, so I, I'm learning about all this stuff as I go along, and it aims to describe the significance of fish as food for indigenous people and uh, the composition and condition of River Murray fish assemblages in pre-European times, at least that's the aim. <clears throat> so the study, we're right in the middle of the study at the moment, that's why I'm sort of saying will, because we're still actually doing all of this work, and this is just preliminary sort of results. So we're going to do, as part of the project, establish a reference collection of fish bones, because if we find fish remains in these, in these middens, then we need to actually understand what species are there, and that's not an easy task. So a reference collection of fish bones, scales, and otoliths, ear bones. We're going to uh, excavate one or more middens in the Barma um, National Park, extract the fish and other fauna remains, describe the species, size, and age of the fish, that were eaten by the local people over time and describe the food overall of the local community in pre-European times. And we've divided the project up into two stages and we're in, currently in the middle of stage one. So stage one is developing the reference collection. Uh, I'll talk about the cores we did in December, um, test cores in the Barma um, area from several middens and oven mounds. Uh, and that's a preliminary stage to determine where we go and look at in more detail for stage two. Uh, but as part of stage one, we're hoping to date the, the, the top and the bottom of our um, cores, also to get an idea of dates of occupation. Stage two is where we want to do the more detailed analysis of maybe one or two uh, middens, but that's for the future. 
So just to give you some sort of background, there are two broad midden types, and I use that in the broader sense, <coughs> oven mounds where uh, people camped and uh, cooked food, and these can be quite large in the, in the area, and, and shell middens where, uh, oh, and the oven mounds tend not to have a lot of shell scattered around on the surface, while shell middens um, generally are on the banks of the river are being eroded, and you can see them very well, and there's lots and lots of shell material that's obvious there. So those are the two broad types I'll talk about. As part of developing our reference collection um, to understand what fish species we've got, we've been given a number of uh, species that we have been um, spending quite a bit of time. Well, actually, we haven't spent that much time. The, the flesh-eating beetles have spent a lot of time um, eating the flesh off uh, a range of species, and you can see the sort of process going on here. Um, so that we're coming up with things like, on the right, we've got a range of species of large bodied fish from the Murray um, Darling Basin, we, we need more, so if you've got more than, than those species there, uh, or even those species that you've got in your freezer because they'll be fresh, um, I'd like to hear from you. Um, so we're getting a reference collection with these bones, but also an uh, important um, uh, component of the sediments when uh, archaeological remains are there are the ear bones or otoliths as on the left, and that's, they're about, that's about a hundred times bigger than they normally are, so they're quite small. So the test coin that we did in December as part of stage one was with, uh, in collaboration with uh, the project team and also the local community, we went out and we uh, cored in a number of spots um, uh, around, the Mar uh, around the Barma region. We put these, uh, a, a very small diameter core, it's just a test core, in and bash it in and break lots of them as we go along. Um, pull the core out, lay it on the table, and um, take out charcoal and shell remains for uh, later dating, but we can get a quite a nice stratigraphic sequence, as you can see there, um, shows us <coughs> that we can go down as far as we possibly can until we get to um, uh, basically clay um, to show us a sequence of, of, of deposits. Uh, and then at the end of the day, we have a satisfied bunch of um, corers. So um, the, sort of very quickly, some very, very preliminary results. I haven't got much to show you here, but we've done 20 cores um, from 11, overall 11 um, uh, oven mounds and shell middens. And generally the oven mounds were considerably deeper than the shell middens. The shell middens are often quite shallow. But we did get down to almost, I think it is uh, just over a metre in some cases with the, um, these oven mounds. So they're quite deep in places. And what we've done, or at least Tamsin has spent a lot of time in the last few months, or last few weeks I suppose, sieving them through a, a series of, um, uh, from very coarse to very fine sieves to um, then analyse for what actually um, is in those, uh, in that material. And I'm just going to give a couple of uh, shell midden results and also a, um, an oven mound result, um, just to show you what sort of things we're getting at the moment. So here's a shell midden, an obvious one on, on the left there, and um, our preliminary results suggest that lots of charcoal in these, um, in these shell middens. Uh, there are some clay balls which <coughs> indicate that they are a cultural origin because the people were cooking there. Um, and in this case, and there's a, uh, a clay ball there uh, on the white. And um, large amounts of shell, lots and lots of shell. And in fact, if we look at that particular core, the core is along the bottom, which you probably can't see particularly well, but it's actually in proportion approximately to um, the depth, and the depth is along the x-axis there um, in five centimetre spits. And on the, um, the y-axis is percentage weight. And the different colours represent the different size fractions that we've sieved. From the blue, the bottom blue, which is greater than 9.5 millimetres, these are through um, a whole series of sieves, to less than 0 0.038 millimetres, so very fine stuff. And all I want you to show you there is that there's a range of particle sizes in this particular shell midden, but the biggest size fraction basically represents shell, particles of shell, or um, fragments of shell in the midden. And you can see there are really two peaks there, very shallow peak, really on the surface, and then a, a bit of a, a lag, and another peak at about 20 to 25 centimetres down. So another sort of um, increase in the amount of shell. And then it really drops off, and it then becomes dominated by smaller size fractions. So really no shell <coughs> beyond um, about, or well, very little shell beyond about 30 to 35 centimetres down. And you can see that if you look at the, the core there, you can see uh, um, quite a lot of white, which give, gives you an idea that, that that's a shell. But this is only a five centimetre core, remember. Uh, in, Oven mounds, they're a very different uh, environment. 
often much bigger. That many of them have been fenced, fenced <laughs> off in the Barma area. Uh, and in, those, in that case, we got lots of charcoal um, and lots of clay balls, also indicating that they were con confirming that they were of cultural origin. In, in some cases, um, there was some uncertainty about whether in fact they were um, uh, of Aboriginal origin, but they are. Um, and relatively small amounts of shell. In most cases, you couldn't see shell on the surface. And when you look at the, um, the same uh, a, a core from the, one of these oven mounds, and you look at the, uh, the depth again, going from the left to the right along the x-axis, and the percent weight of the different size fractions, with the bottom blue being that biggest one where we had before lots of shell, you get um, a relatively small proportion of those large fragments and um, confirming, in fact, that the, the most of the size fractions made up of very small particles, and a lot of it was ash, in fact. You could tell that it, this is places where a lot of cooking had been going on and very little shell um, in there at all. And, in fact, you can see <coughs> the clay ball you're sitting there in, the, um, in that particular core. So that's really the extent of the results that I can, I can show you at this stage. At the moment, we're right in the middle of um, mm -hmm. uh, processing these samples. But our reference collection is well underway, but we certainly need more uh, individuals and more species to, we'd like to make the collection as, as comprehensive as possible of all the species of the Murray Darling Basin and, and, and make it freely available to everybody. Stage one coring has been done, the sieving and weighing is complete, but we're in the middle of processing the samples, counting shell, charcoal, all that sort of stuff. Our results do confirm that all sites that we sampled were of cultural origin. Uh, the shell middens contain lots of shell, clay balls, charcoal, but are relatively shallow. The oven mounds contain little shell, um, but they do have clay balls and charcoal, and they're relatively deep. We haven't seen, unfortunately, any fish bones as yet, um, but we've still got a long way to go. And the otoliths um, of these species are, are pretty small, only in the, in the order of sort of less than a millimetre to maybe two millimetres in length, so it means a lot of microscope work for, um, for TAMS, and so we've got a long way to go with that. So I can't really give any results about what species, as Wayne might have asked, um, might have been in this area in the past. Um, and just to finish off, uh, we're still waiting to hear from a few funding applications to actually get the dating done, because we're working on a, a shoestring budget here at the moment, and at the moment we still haven't got any funding for stage two. So if you'd like to throw some money at me um, afterwards, that'd be great. And I'd just like to acknowledge um, uh, a lot of assistance from Andrew Martin and Francisco Almeida from the Aboriginal Affairs Victoria have been really good in helping us with permits and, and uh, surveying areas um, and funding from Living Murray through the MDBA.